And I think what you're advocating, Richard, is what we call perspective taking, is to step out of my perspective long enough to see the world, how you've constructed it, how you created it. And one thing that you did that I found fascinating when it comes to the whole sexuality issue is that you went to an Episcopal Mass for gay parishioners and you actually sat in that mass along yeah. with them. Yeah. Now can I ask you, wh what do you think was the value of that and was there any pushback from people saying, but, but aren't you condoning what they're doing? So what was the value and what was the pushback? Well, first of all, I've talked a lot about that subject, so I thought I ought to experience uh, firsthand uh, people who uh, disagree with me, but nonetheless uh, find it necessary to come together and worship mm -hmm. God. And so I thought I could sit in the back, but when I got there, uh, uh, all the back seats were taken, and I, I could do nothing but sit in the midst of uh, what was largely a, a gay lesbian uh, audience, uh, congregation. And uh, when uh, the, the two things that just overwhelmed me was one, uh, uh, we, we uh, prayed Psalm 139. Mm. Uh, when I was in my mother's womb, you knit my parts together. To, to hear people around me saying, uh, it's God who, who knit me together as a, as a human person. But then at a certain point when um, we had the prayers for the dead, which I'm not used to, but, uh, and, and the priest said, you know, a lot of you have lost people to um, HIV AIDS. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, just speak out the name uh, of, a, of a person whom you have loved uh, who died of HIV AIDS. And um, it began with just a, a kind of simple uh, Marlene or Harry. And pretty soon it became thunderous and people were sobbing. Wow. And I thought, you know, these are grieving people. These are people who've experienced tremendous loss. And uh, I felt a solidarity with them, uh, a bonding with them in their, their sobbing that uh, if I'd been arguing with them about their views or, or how do you interpret Romans 1 or something like that, it would have been a very different experience. <laughs> yeah. But there, there was something wonderful about that, and I experienced that as a gift. I didn't change my theology or my ethics, mm -hmm. um, but, uh, but to see their humanness, I think, is a very important thing. One way to think about what happened there is you were drawn further deeper into empathy, yeah. mm -hmm. and you've written about the importance of empathy along with other uh, civil attitudes, as you call them. Uh, talk some about the other attitudes you think that we ought to be seeking to cultivate so that we can um, do better at civil discourse. Yeah. Well, I mean, I, first of all, I do think empathy is fundamental because uh, the incarnation is all about empathy. You know, the epistle to the Hebrew says that he, he knows what it's like to be us. Uh, because he suffered in the ways that we're, we've suffered. He tempted in the ways that we've been tempted. Um, and so uh, if we're going to be followers of Jesus, I think we have to cultivate that kind of empathy with people who, while we were yet sinners, uh, he came with empathy uh, for us. Uh, secondly, I, I, I do think that uh, a sense of humility and, and you, know, you can go right back to just the Old Testament rigid command morality. I mean, we're not supposed to bear false witness against our neighbors. Mm -hmm. Go back to the, the mass that you attended, mm -hmm. where you heard those names being said and you heard the weeping. Uh, we call that embodied perspective taking. My body is in there and I'm hearing it and I'm seeing it. Uh, that deeply resonates with me, but I, I can hear the objections. And the objections would be something like, yeah, but Richard, your presence there condoned it. Um, acknowledgement is synonymous with condoning it. And so I think there's some people who would be deeply disappointed that you legitimized uh, that congregation, that, right? And that's the kind of objections I tend to run into. What would be your response to that? Well, it's, uh, uh, presence isn't necessarily condoning. I mean, we, uh, we sent out missionaries into cultures that do some pretty bad things, and yet their, their presence there in order to find ways in which we can open up conversations uh, about the deepest needs of, of the human condition. Uh, and I, I think that's the thing where, uh, I don't, I don't want to say I went as a missionary, that sounds a little too, too much, but on the other hand, the missionary model is, is not a bad one to think about. Uh, 
uh, I'm part of a denomination now where people are getting out because uh, they disagree with yeah. decisions that have been made in that denomination. And uh, I, I respect, uh, you know, their sense that God is calling people to do various things. But, uh, you know, if, if, if you were sent as a missionary to a, 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 a Hindu village and uh, you discover that they were doing things there that you really, really bothered you, uh, you wouldn't leave because of that. Uh, and uh, if for no other reason, we can think of ourselves as staying in certain denominations uh, something like missionaries, uh, representing a certain perspective that uh, goes counter to. Now again, that can sound very imperialistic and, you know, one-upmanship and, and all the rest, but the, the heart of it is that, that presence, uh, being among, when we think of uh, Jesus' willingness to uh, sit at a meal uh, with people with whom he disagreed. He didn't say to Zacchaeus, uh, uh, unless you repair your ways, uh, I, I'm not going to come to your house. Uh, the first thing he said to him was, I'm coming to your house. Yeah, yeah. And uh, uh, he tells us to go into villages and to seek out uh, possibilities. And so I, I think, uh, yeah, presence does not constitute condoning. And I, I guess I'd want to talk to people who, who say that it does. Uh, mm -hmm. What is it exactly that you fear about that? Uh, what is it that, uh, what would be a, if, if, if there were a thousand gays and lesbians at that, at that mass, uh, how would you have reached them? Uh, or do you think it wasn't important? Uh, uh, how would you have tried to understand what was going on there? Uh, and one way to do it is show up. Barbara Meyerhoff is a communication theorist who has a great quote. She says, unless we exist in the eyes of others, we come to doubt our own existence. And I think, Richard, what happened was those people existed in front of you, and you acknowledged their pain, their sorrow, and I think, I think we could get a lot more of that today in our civil discourse of reaching out to people outside the Christian community.